Dear students, I welcome you to the e-learning program through EPG Patshala. I am Dr. K. Pandima Devi, working as Associate Professor in the Department of Biotechnology, Alagappa University, Karekudi. We are going to discuss about the free radicals with special reference to its sources and types. I will explain about what free radicals are and how they are generated in our system. As you know, different types of free radicals are generated which plays a dual role in our system. Some are beneficial and some causes damages to the major macromolecules of the cell and lead to the development of many diseases. In this session, we will learn about the sources and types of free radicals which are either beneficial or act as initiating factors for the development of many cellular damages. First, we will see an overview on what free radicals are and then we will discuss about the beneficial and damaging role of free radicals and the antioxidants which are the protective mechanisms against free radicals and then we will discuss about the types and sources of free radicals. To begin with, let us see about what free radicals are. As you are aware, atoms consist of nucleus in the center which contains protons and neutrons and electrons are found in the orbitals or shells surrounding the nucleus. When an atom is present at the ground state, it will be most stable and all the electrons will be at the lowest possible energy levels. Electrons will fill the innermost shell and then the outer shells. The outermost shell of the atoms in the ground state will have two electrons spinning on opposite directions. Atoms will try to retain its stability by either losing an electron and emptying its outer shell or gaining an electron and filling its outer shell or forming bonds with an other atoms and sharing its electron so that its outer shell is complete. But under certain conditions, atoms are produced with unpaired electron in the outer valence shell which are termed as free radicals. Because of the presence of unpaired electron, the free radicals are highly reactive. The free radicals theory of oxygen toxicity was proposed in 1954 by Gershom which defines that the toxicity of oxygen is due to the formation of free radicals. Later on, many scientists have contributed for defining the role of free radicals in biological systems including the concept that free radicals are produced during cellular processes. The important properties of free radicals are, the first one is since the free radicals have the ability to either donate an electron or extract an electron from other molecules, they can act either as an oxidant or a reductant. And secondly, due to their high reactivity, they have a very short half-life. Now we will see about the beneficial and damaging role of free radicals. If you take the beneficial effects, generally the free radicals like the reactive oxygen species, which are termed as ROS, as well as the reactive nitrogen species which are termed as RNS are products of normal cellular metabolism. At lower concentrations, both ROS and RNS helps in the host defense system. Generally, the phagocytic cells like neutrophils, monocytes and macrophages on phagocytosis of the pathogenic organisms consume oxygen and produces reactive oxygen species which is called as respiratory burst. The enzyme NADPH oxidase reduces oxygen to superoxide anion which further forms hydrogen peroxide mediated by the enzyme superoxide dismutase or hydroxyl radical. The other toxic products which are formed like the singlet oxygen and nitric oxide which is produced in the macrophages also combine and attack the pathogens. The other beneficial effect of the free radicals include their role in induction of mitogenic response and signal transaction. For example, nitric oxide acts as an intercellular messenger and modulates blood flow, thrombosis and neural activity. Nitric oxide is also important for non-specific host defense and for killing intracellular pathogens and tumors. Hence, low concentrations of both reactive oxygen species and reactive nitrogen species are vital for human health. On the other hand, if you see the damaging effect of free radicals, though free radicals are present in every living cell, the damaging effect of free radicals are influenced by many other factors including stress, genetic, environmental factors and so on. Also, when produced at higher concentrations, 
The free radicals damage the macromolecules of the cell like lipids, proteins and nucleic acids. Free radicals mainly damage the unsaturated fatty acids present in the plasma membrane of the cells which affects the fluidity of the membrane and also affects the function of the membrane bound proteins. If you see the other damaging effects of free radicals, it includes damage to proteins which interferes with the functions of the proteins and damage to nucleic acids which lead to cell death by necrosis and apoptosis and can sometimes also induce mutation. Because of these damaging effects, excessive free radical production is implicated in different pathological processes like aging and the development of many diseases like neurodegenerative disorders, cancer and so on. Let us now see about how antioxidants offer a protective mechanism against free radicals. Generally, cells are protected against deleterious effects of these free radicals by the presence of various exogenous and endogenous antioxidant systems. These antioxidants which offer a protective mechanism are defined as any substance that when present in low concentrations compared to that of an oxidizable substrate significantly delays or inhibits the oxidation of that substrate. The antioxidants neutralize the excessive free radicals and also prevent the toxic effects induced by the free radicals. The antioxidant defense system includes enzymes like superoxide dismutase, catalase and nutrients like vitamins and plant phenols. So now you would have understood the significance of antioxidants in removing the free radicals. What will happen if the antioxidant defense system does not function properly? Now this results in a condition called as oxidative stress. So oxidative stress is a condition which results due to the imbalance in the production of free radicals and its removal by the defensive antioxidants. Till now we discussed in short about the free radicals, antioxidant system and oxidative stress. Now let us discuss in detail about the different types and sources of free radicals. Many types of free radicals are produced within the body but the free radicals which play a major role in human physiology are reactive oxygen species and reactive nitrogen species. The reactive oxygen species which is termed as ROS are free radicals which involve the presence of oxygen radicals. The common examples of reactive oxygen species which are categorized as radicals include hydroxyl radical, superoxide anion, singlet oxygen, nitric oxide radical, hydroperoxyl radical, peroxyl radical and lipid peroxyl radical. First we will see about hydroxyl radicals. Hydroxyl radical is an electrically neutral molecule because oxygen is electronegative and hydrogen is electropositive. It is chemically a very reactive free radical. Since it is a short lived free radical, it attacks the macromolecules present within few nanometers from the site of generation of hydroxyl radicals. These hydroxyl radicals are produced in our system by utilizing iron. Generally, superoxide anion and hydrogen peroxide have poor solubility in aqueous solutions. Hence, it is generally believed that the toxicity of superoxide anion and hydrogen peroxide in living organisms is mediated through the production of hydroxyl radicals. The two main reactions which accounts for hydroxyl radical production are the iron catalyzed Haber Weiss reaction or the superoxide driven Fenton reaction. Considering the Fenton reaction, the production of hydroxyl radical depends upon the availability of iron as the metal ion catalyst. Under normal conditions, iron will be bound to transport and storage proteins like transferrin, ferritin, lactoferrin and so on. So that free iron will not be available for hydroxyl radical production. Whereas in conditions like iron overload diseases, it is necessary to check the availability of free iron in the human body. Iron accumulation has been observed in certain neurological disorders. Hence, iron induced hydroxyl radical production has also been linked with the pathogenesis of such chronic diseases. The other components for the formation of hydroxyl radical that is hydrogen peroxide and superoxide anion which will be present in all the aerobic cells 
since hydrogen peroxide and superoxide anions are produced by electron transport chain and reactions catalyzed by oxidase enzymes. The hydroxyl radicals which are produced can also react with other radicals and non-radicals like superoxide anion, hydroperoxyl radical, hydroxyl radical, nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide. Next we will see about the free radical superoxide anion. Superoxide anion has a negative charge and it has a very short half life. They have very limited diffusion hence act in regions closer to the site of production. Since it cannot diffuse through the membrane, they cannot act as signaling molecule. There are many sources for production of superoxide anion in our system. Oxygen is an important component of all aerobic organisms. During aerobic metabolism, if incomplete reduction of oxygen to water occurs, it results in the generation of reactive oxygen species like superoxide anion, hydrogen peroxide and hydroxyl radical. The other major source of superoxide anion includes its production inside the mitochondria during the respiration process. In the mitochondrial respiration, electron flows through the electron transport chain and in the end of the process, oxygen is reduced to water. Whereas, a small amount of electrons leaks from the process and leads to one electron reduction of oxygen which results in the formation of superoxide anion. Complex 1 and 3 are the major systems which generate the superoxide anions. The superoxide anion results in the formation of hydrogen peroxide which is not a free radical but is one of the reactive oxygen species produced by a cell. But when compared to superoxide anion which cannot cross through the membrane, the hydrogen peroxide produced has the ability to cross the membrane and transmit the free radical mediated damage outside the cell. It actually mediates its toxic effect by decomposing to the highly reactive hydroxyl radical. The enzyme NADPH oxidase present in the professional phagocytic cells like neutrophils and macrophages also contributes for the formation of superoxide anions. The NADPH oxidase system which is present in the phagocytic vacuole walls transfers the electrons across the membrane which is accepted by oxygen to form the superoxide anion. In this host defense mechanism, respiratory burst is generated which helps in killing the pathogens. There is another enzyme called as xanthine oxidase which normally converts hypoxanthine to xanthine. The xanthine formed is converted into uric acid and hydrogen peroxide which is also capable of producing superoxide anions. The other enzymes which mediate the production of superoxide anions include lipoxygenase and cyclooxygenase. The superoxide anions which are produced inside the cell reacts with iron sulfur cluster and hence damages the proteins which contains iron sulfur cluster. Generally in the reducing environment present inside the cell, superoxide anion act as an oxidant and target small molecules like catecholamines and iron sulfur cluster containing enzymes like 6-phosphogluconate dehydratase, dihydroxy acid dehydratase aconitase, fumarase A and B and so on. Oxidation of these enzymes by superoxide anion makes the iron sulfur cluster unstable which makes the loss of ion. Iron which is released reacts with hydrogen peroxide or alkyl hydroperoxide and leads to the formation of hydroxyl radical or alkoxyl radical. These potent oxidants oxidizes the macromolecules inside the cell like nucleic acids, proteins or phospholipids. Our system has an enzyme named as superoxide dismutase which defends against the superoxide ions produced in our system. Next we will see about the free radical singlet oxygen. It is a highly reactive and diffusible reactive oxygen species. What is the important process which releases singlet oxygen in our system? It is an important defense mechanism which all of you know called as phagocytosis. During phagocytosis, the activated phagocytic leukocytes release reactive oxygen species suddenly which is called as respiratory burst. The enzyme myeloperoxidase present in the activated leukocytes produce hypochlorous acid which reacts with hydrogen peroxide and forms singlet oxygen. Singlet oxygen can also be produced by UVA light. 
When skin is exposed to UVA light of the solar radiation, it causes aging and skin cancer due to the production of singlet oxygen. Endogenous photosensitizers present in the skin like flavins weakly absorbs the UVA light and transfers the energy to generate the singlet oxygen. Our system has certain peroxidase enzymes like myeloperoxidase, lactoperoxidase, horseradish peroxidase and chloroperoxidase which serve as a source for producing singlet oxygen. When you consider the damaging effects of the singlet oxygen, it mainly targets the unsaturated fatty acids, sterols, proteins, DNA and RNA. Nitric oxide radical is a free radical which contains a nitrogen atom also, hence it is also categorized as reactive nitrogen species. So we will discuss about it when we see about the reactive nitrogen species. The next type of reactive oxygen species is a hydroperoxyl radical. which is generated from the superoxide anion which is a protonated form of superoxide. It is a highly reactive radical and a strong oxidizing agent. Because of its high stability, it can diffuse to the neighboring structures. Also, at physiological pH, it is present only at minute levels. Peroxyl radicals are the reactive oxygen species generated from the superoxide anion. It is a highly reactive than superoxide anion and causes extensive damage to cell membranes and lipoproteins. In addition, peroxyl radicals are involved in DNA cleavage and protein backbone modification. It also synergistically enhances the induction of DNA damage by superoxide anions. Lipid peroxyl radicals are another type of reactive oxygen species involved in an important process called as lipid peroxidation in which the lipid radicals are formed ultimately resulting in the destruction of membrane lipids. The unsaturated fatty acids rather than the saturated fatty acids are more prone for lipid peroxidation due to the presence of double bond. If the methylene group is present adjacent to the double bond, it makes it weaker and more susceptible for hydrogen abstraction. The reaction is initiated by the abstraction of hydrogen atom from the lipid and formation of the carbon centered radical. The reaction is propagated by the combination of carbon centered radical with oxygen to form the peroxyl radical. Peroxyl radical further abstracts hydrogen from the other polyunsaturated fatty acids and start a chain of reaction. The reaction is terminated by the combination of the lipid peroxyl radical to form the non-radical compounds. So far we have been discussing about the various reactive oxygen species. Now we will see about the reactive nitrogen species which includes nitric oxide radical, peroxynitrite and nitrite. Nitric oxide radical is a gaseous free radical. This relatively stable free radical has one unpaired electron. It is considered as a biomarker of several reactive nitrogen species. Since it is a soluble gas, it has the ability to diffuse throughout the cytoplasm and also through the membrane. It plays a role in different regulatory mechanisms by acting as an intracellular signaling molecule. Nitric oxide is generally produced by the enzyme nitric oxide synthase from L-arginine in vascular endothelial cells. Hence, it plays a major role in the maintenance of normal endothelial functions. The nitric oxide released from the endothelial cells binds with the iron heme of the enzyme guanylate cyclase in smooth muscle cells and platelets which converts GTP to cyclic GMP. The cyclic GMP which acts as a second messenger helps in smooth muscle relaxation and inhibition of platelet aggregation. Nitric acid participates in radical radical reaction and results in the formation of reactive nitrogen species. The radical radical reaction is nothing but reaction of nitric oxide with other free radicals. For example, nitric oxide reacts with the free radicals like superoxide anion and produces peroxynitrite. Also, nitric oxide reacts with hydroxyl radical and produces the non radical nitrous acid. Nitric oxide can also produce a cytoprotective agent termed as nitrite 
about which we will discuss later. Nitric oxide is also capable of forming nitrate. Generally, nitric oxide which is produced by the endothelium rapidly diffuses into the red blood cells where it reacts with the iron present in oxyhemoglobin. Now, you would have understood that nitric oxide can act either as a cytotoxic or a cytoprotective agent. As a cytoprotective agent, it acts as a neurotransmitter and a vasodilator. The dual acting ability of nitric oxide is related to the amount of nitric oxide produced and its ability to interact with the nearby molecules. The second type of reactive nitrogen species is the peroxynitrite which is a strong oxidant. It oxidizes mainly biomolecules like lipids, nucleic acids, thiols and thioesters. Increased production of peroxynitrite has been linked to the greater risk for diseases including cancer, stroke and so on. The two major sources for peroxynitrite formation includes nitric oxide and superoxide anion. It is interesting to note that neither nitric oxide nor superoxide anion are very toxic to the cells because superoxide is effectively scavenged by superoxide dismutase and nitric oxide is converted to nitrate in red blood cells. But if the nitric oxide and superoxide anion are produced in close proximity, they result in the formation of peroxynitrite, which is a fast reaction not catalyzed by any enzyme. The peroxynitrite produced in certain inflammatory conditions leads to the nitration of the tyrosine residues present in proteins and causes damages to the proteins by forming 3 nitrotyrosine. The 3 nitrotyrosine which is formed alters the structure and functions of proteins. The alteration of phosphorylation or dephosphorylation of proteins due to the formation of 3 nitrotyrosine also interferes with the signal transaction processes. Apart from damaging the proteins, the peroxynitrite also causes nitration of the DNA bound purines and leads to the formation of 8 nitroguanosine. This results in the induction of DNA single strand breaks. Apart from interacting with the macromolecules directly, the peroxynitrite is also capable of producing other damaging radicals. For example, peroxynitrite reacts with carbon dioxide and forms nitrogen dioxide and carbonate radical through the nitroso peroxycarbonate intermediate. Carbonate radical by acting as a biological oxidant gets involved in many damaging reactions. The other damaging molecule formed from peroxynitrite includes peroxynitrous acid which is a protonated form of peroxynitrite. It can cross the lipid bilayer and generate other reactive radicals like hydroxyl radical and nitric oxide radicals during homolytic fission. These one electron oxidants initiate lipid peroxidation and nitration of lipids and proteins. The third type of reactive nitrogen species is the nitrite which is a storage pool of nitric oxide. Nitrite is used generally for the treatment of myocardial ischemia. Nitrite can be produced from different sources such as from oxygen and nitrate. For instance, nitric oxide and oxygen undergoes auto oxidation to form nitrite. Whereas at the physiological concentrations of nitric oxide and oxygen, this is a very slow reaction. Nitrite can also be produced through the reduction of nitrate. Nitrite on the other hand acts as a source for nitric oxide which has been considered to offer protective effect in ischemia which occurs due to inadequate blood supply to any part of body or organ. Nitric oxide is normally synthesized by nitric oxide synthase from L-arginine. But when the nitric oxide synthase activity is low, the enzymes xanthine oxidoreductase and aldehyde oxidase catalyze the conversion of nitrite to nitric oxide during anaerobic or hypoxic conditions and promotes nitric oxide induced vasodilation in ischemia. To summarize, free radicals are categorized as atoms or molecules which have an unpaired electron in their outermost shell. I am sure that you would have now understood about the types of free radicals and their sources. We have also discussed about the beneficial and damaging effects of the free radicals in the human system. 
I thank you very much for listening to the detailed discussion on the types and sources of free radicals.